Hey everyone, it's Derek with OPTP, and as part of our Summer of Savings, this week is Pelvic Health Week. Now, today we are in for a treat because we have Dr. Valerie Phelps from IAOM, who's going to be talking to us about using the SI Lock support belt for low back pain. We're going to run through some of the most common questions we get, hopefully provide you and your patients with a lot of great information. So, Dr. Val, thanks so much for joining us. We're going to jump right into the first most common question that we get, which is, you know, how do people know if they need an SI belt? And that also is, who is it for? Well, thank you. It's great to be here, Derek. If a patient complains of pain in what we call the upper inner quadrant of the buttock, that is a perfect indication for an SI lock. Another place is what we call lumbosacral junction. If somebody has pain right in the dimples of the low back, that is an indication for a need for an SI lock. And then lastly, we find it very effective with people who have ongoing uh, chronic conditions with the what we call the, the gluteal muscles or the external rotators of the hip. So to help a tendonitis in this area, an SI lock can actually help unload those structures while they heal. So those are where pain, where the pain might be, Conditions that are often, you know, diagnosed are sacroiliac problems, L5-S1 disc or facet joint problems, hip joint problems or tendon problems, or even pubic symphysis uh, pathology. Perfect. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, so if uh, an individual who's suffering from one or more of those symptoms uses uh, an SI lock support belt, what are the benefits? And kind of well, the Yes, the benefits are that it actually provides external support. So um, the pelvic rings, you have to see the pelvic ring as the foundation for movement for the spine and the trunk above, but also respect all the impact and load that it takes with every step um, and, and even with sitting, you know, basically all forces from below. So this uh, structure is meant to be a very, very stable and allow a little bit of movement, uh, interestingly enough, so that we don't get stress fractures. So we've got, we've got this uh, very tight SI joint, we've got a pubic symphysis in the front, and this external support allows for a more solid foundation both for the spine, and then it allows for better absorption of the forces coming from below. So it'll also, by virtue of ligaments that run from the ilium to the L5 uh, vertebra, it will also immediately stabilize L5-S1. So if you have L5-S1 disc problems or facet problems, and you wanna stop the shear forces through that segment, by stabilizing the ilia, L5-S1 will also be better supported. The belt is simple and it's, um, it's very comfortable to wear. So it also works as um, a reminder. Everybody should be utilizing their deep core, activating their deep core, whether that's through the transverse abdominis or pelvic floor, and just having a little external um, friction can remind you, ooh, I've got to also get my internal stiffness um, activated. So we call that a reminder to dynamically stabilize. Okay, great. Yeah, so I know, um, I'm sure people would love to see a, a demonstration of how it's used so we can dive into that next year. And also maybe as we're talking through that, you know, there's a lot of similar tools available out on the market. So maybe uh, as you're demonstrating for us on how to use the, the SI lock support belt, you can also talk to uh, maybe some of its unique features and, and why it might be more superior uh, to some of the other uh, options. Sure. What I love about the SI belt is that it's so simple. And I think that sometimes simple is just as good, if not better than, than most anything. And when I've worn the SI belt, what I'm pleased about is that nobody can tell I've got anything on. So it's made to go uh, have contact with the skin. There's a hypoallergenic non-stick um, material that fits on, that goes on either side. 
and it's very, very low profile. It's also um, relatively inexpensive. So it's easy to have two or three lying around. I've had patients that have one for swimming, one for running, and one for to day-to-day -day use. Um, and then, you know, even one that's being washed while the other one's being worn. So low profile. And what's super effective about it actually is that it is a most effective stabilizer because it gives support from the sides. If you look at the pelvic ring and what we're trying to stabilize, the sacrum is this wedge shape and, and the ilia are come in and attach to it. So imagine how can you best stabilize a wedge? Well, simply, simply put a little ring or slip a ring around the narrowest part and then with very little force, you've stabilized that wedge, which is the intent of this belt. Early SI belts and even some still have some sort of like big pocket pushing here. Um, and that is not where the stability is needed. The stability is needed with force from the, from the sides pushing in. So if you look at the belt, we start with the label in the back. And the label in the, in the back can be applied either upright or upside down. What we're going to do is we're gonna look for the sacrum on ourselves and we're gonna place that label in the middle of the sacrum. And then we're gonna wrap those straps around to the front and we're going to be looking for, to place them just above the top of what's called the great, greater trochanter of the hip. So here I'm gonna show you on myself I'm gonna stand up on a little box here so that you can see me. All right, good. Okay, so I'm actually at about the same height as the skeleton. Here we go, looking for the label. I'm gonna place it right, right at my sacrum, which is kind of above the, the or luteal area there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the lowest edge of the belt is just above the, that very tip of my greater trochanter. And I can palpate on that, that on myself by sliding up my leg bone and then uh, making what we call an internal external rotation of the hip. And the very tip of that bone slides under my fingers. Then I know I've got it just at the right spot. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take one end and I'm going to thread it through the plastic little belt and I'm going to place that belt right at about the lowest part of my, of my hip. It's not the lowest part of my hip, it's about mid hip, but it's deep enough so that it is just right and does not interfere with sitting and bending. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to relatively tighten the other side. And for this reason, we always have a short side and a long side. Once I get it perfectly placed, just above the trochanters, label in, the, in my sacral region, then what I can do is I can take both and just tighten gently. Again, making sure I'm kind of in the deepest part of my groin there. Should be about two or three fingers uh, room here, maybe about 15 to 20 pounds of pressure. That's all we need for a nice stabilization effect. And what we recommend is that you wear this actually next to the skin, there it won't slip. And each day, place this little plastic clip on an alternate side. So if I were to put this on tomorrow, I would simply undo it, turn it upside down, Locate my greater trochanters. And now you see, I'm gonna have to switch this little clip to be a little bit more, again, deep in my groin area so that it doesn't interfere with sitting. And I'm ready to go the next day. So the things that I've said are pretty much well outlined in the little information sheet that comes in the SI lock um, packet. And what I wanted to make note of is that in the 
section that says applying the SI lock, it recommends putting the SI lock on while lying down with knee supported. And the reason it says that is because that places the uh, sacroiliac joint in its resting position. That is uh, one way to put the belt on, but you just saw me put it on in standing. So an individual can try standing equally on both legs, or sometimes it's more affected by actually loading the painful side. That's gonna kind of lock in that side a little bit more. So you can be with creative with how you are positioned when you put the belt on, and each position might give a little bit different effect. So try out different positions for your optimal um, placement. Perfect. All right, Val, well, thank you so much for all the wonderful information today. I hope uh, really provides some benefit for not only clinicians, but also people who are currently suffering from uh, low back and hip pain who are watching. Um, we do want to encourage everyone to head over to optp.com as part of our summer of savings. We have uh, wonderful sales taking place every week. Uh, a lot of content coming out uh, like this video and, and of course, much more. Uh, again, that's optp.com. So Dr. Bell, thanks so much for, for joining us. And uh, we'll see you guys next week for OPTP's Summer of Savings. Thanks.